Um, Brad Fast, uh, who's our video coordinator and hockey ops uh, coach, uh, moved on and he moved into medical sales and, and doing some things. Still lives in town, so he'll see if be around a little bit. But Dan Sturgis, uh, who was on the 07 championship team, uh, took over for his spot. He'd been uh, out west in Denver and uh, coaching uh, a little bit of club college and, and actually helping out uh, Coach Wazdecki with his high school team for the last three years as well. And, I've uh, really invested a lot of time in, into getting into the hockey business, so we welcome him. Great to have another Spartan. And then uh, last but not least, Jason Zadi, uh, who's been our volunteer coach for five years, um, has moved on. And he's uh, uh, going to be the goalie coach of the Carolina Hurricanes with uh, with another uh, great Spartan, Rod Brendamore. So uh, that, that's a great move for Jason, and uh, we're all real excited for uh, all three of those people. Um, and then uh, a great, great addition, you know, sometimes you get lucky. Uh, Jim Slater uh, is retired after a long career uh, playing in the NHL and in Europe and has been living in town for lots of years. So he's back. He's going to be working on his uh, uh, master's degree and be a volunteer coach. So um, some exciting things for people leaving and real excited for us for uh, people coming in. Um, the team we got going last Wednesday, uh, kind of jumping right into things. We have three freshmen this year. Uh, all those guys have come in, they look good. Uh, we look for them to contribute, obviously. Uh, those are the kind of guys that we want to be adding right now. Um, but the guys have looked really good. The carryover um, has been nice to see. I think they did a great job uh, this spring and in the summer, although we can't work with them a lot in the summer. Uh, Coach Porkovich is one, one who handles that, and they handle their on these stuff. They, they did a nice job, and uh, um, I'm excited about how they've shown up. Uh, I'm excited about the leadership. Uh, we're, we've been a very hard team to play against. I think the second half of last year were extremely tough. I think uh, we'll pick up right back where we left off. And then the last thing I'd like to mention is this is a, it's a really special week. There's been a lot of good things. If you're driven by Mun, you've probably seen it. But um, we've kind of combined two things this weekend. And, and one is uh, it's the 60th reunion for the 1959 Final Four team. Uh, a bunch of those gentlemen are coming back. That's outstanding. The 89 team, uh, which Coach Luongo and I uh, and, and Coach Mazzotti uh, were all a part of. Uh, they're coming back as well, and then the 99 team. So we've got a 60 year reunion, 30 year reunion, and a 20 year reunion, and final four teams. And the timing of that is great. They'll be in for the game, football game on Saturday and probably get to pop out on the field, which is neat. Um, but then on top of that, uh, we have a lot of our donors and, and people that have, have really helped out uh, with the whole MUN project. And if you, like I said, if you've been by there, there's a pretty good hole there. Uh, that's been going great, so we're going to have kind of an opening ceremony, and uh, uh, it's an invite only, unfortunately, for, for some people, but uh, people out there will probably have close to 300 people, counting all the, all the athletes there. So, you know, that project is, uh, uh, has been something that's been a, maybe not at the top of my list, but pretty darn close uh, since I got back here, and uh, we had a lot of people that uh, uh, didn't think we'd ever get there, and I'm I guess I'm, I'm a man that I expect to be believed, and if I'm not, I figure over time I'll, I'll change your mind. And like I said, a lot of people didn't think we'd get there, but we've had unbelievable help uh, from tons of people in the community. Coach Izzo, as you guys know, has um, really played a great role in that, not just, not just with his money, but with his time, which is our most valuable asset. And uh, hey, we've got that hole going. We got, still have a little ways to go money-wise, but uh, that's going to be a, a great addition for us, and, and as I've told a lot of people, uh, there's transactional uh, things that happen, and, and that's when you give us money, and there's transformational things that happen, and this is a transformational thing for, for our program. Uh, it's much needed, and uh, like I said, we couldn't be more excited, and, and hopefully this time next year, uh, we'll be operating uh, full-time out of there. So that's about where we're at right now. So Slater, excuse me, Slater replaces design? Yes, sir. Dan, you know this, there have been some very well-known donors to your project who have asked, why are they not announcing anything to try to get it going? Do you know why they're holding back? Because I think if people knew, there's some very high-profile people that have made some big pledges that hold back announcing well, uh, other names. Well, there, there's some that have been anonymous, so we have to kind of respect that, I guess. And and for what, you know, like I said, they, they want it to remain that way. I know some of them uh, there's there's going to be something great that's going to be in Coach Mason's name that's kind of going there, and, and a lot of that is done to that. So I think they're trying to pull back on that, and make sure that we continue to build on that, and make sure that that's uh, uh, up to the standard that we want for, for Coach Mason. But I think a lot of that's just personal request by some people. 
Yes. When you've got uh, renovations going to money, there's other places that build brand new facilities that try to spark new tradition. Is there a chance to have the best of both worlds because you've got a place with a lot of history, but you're also adding some modern amenities? Is that the best of both worlds? I know there's a push to get a new arena, but in, in retrospect, might this be the best way to go? You know, I love money. And, you know, what, what we've done uh, with the, the arena part of it and the fan experience and the players' game day experience on the ice, you know, there's new ice, there's new boards, uh, there's new glass uh, very recently, the scoreboard, the atmosphere. I think it's a great size for college hockey. Uh, the Huntington Club, uh, the Suites. I think walking around Mun, that's, that's one of our favorite trips around there. Uh, it, it, it is like a hall of history walking around there from our NHL guys, from our teams that have won. Um, I love the corner with Biggie Mun. You can sit there and talk to people. What a tremendous impact he had not only on Michigan State, but the national scales and the integration of uh, college sports. Uh, there's a ton of history. He had coached with Sony and, and Coach Mason and, and all the great teams and players that have been through there. So I love that part of it, and, and we needed to bump the other parts up. So you know what, it's, uh, um, I think that's a good way to put it. I think we have the history, we have the tradition, and I think that was kind of the slogan we have there, is expanding the tradition. So I think you take the great parts that you have and, and you add on to that, and that's the same way you want to build a hockey team. So there's new glass, because sometimes that glass at certain angles, it was hard to like see. Like that, a few years ago, yeah. So it's the NHL, NHL glass and boards, and uh, uh, that had all been replaced, I think, about five years ago, when they did the ice plant and changed all that. How fired up are you about getting started pretty soon? Well, you know, coaches, you, you, you sit around all summer, and, and paperwork's not very exciting, and watching summer hockey can, can stink a lot. But, you know, getting everybody back on campus and, and getting them out on the ice, and uh, yeah, that's what we want to do. You know, practices are for coaches, games are for players. But uh, they getting on the ice last Wednesday was a great day. And, and when the guys play well and they respond and they work and, and they gel as a group, uh, that makes it even better. And that's, those are the cultural things that we've been trying to work on. And, um, you know, the first year, the first summer, you know, we had to kind of lay, lay a lot of the groundwork and, and, and try and push some things through. This year, um, I thought the offseason was really player-driven. You know, you want your players to take over the locker room, and that's a that's a good first step. You're still in a limited amount of time, right? We are. We're eight hours a week right now, so up to four hours on the ice, and then whatever's left over, we can spend off the ice. Which you know what I think for the first month is great. That's that's just about right. It gives it gives us enough time to you know get through the kinks, and we can go pretty hard. And it also gives the guys uh, quite a bit of rest time, which which I think is is. Uh, Neglected oftentimes. So when do you start for full time? Full time October 5th, we'll go to 20 hours. Okay. I'm sure there's improvement across the board as players get a year older, but are, are there one or two or three players that have really taken it up a level that, uh, you, that you care to mention right now? You know, there, there's going to be a lot of you know responsibility that maybe some of the guys in may have. I think Jared Rosberg is, is, is a young man to keep an eye on this year. He, he was tremendous for us in kind of a quiet way last year, uh, but towards I'd say the second half really turned into an, an outstanding defenseman. I think, I think Jared has a, a chance to play some significant pro hockey. He's going to be a leader. He's going to do really well for us. Uh, Patrick Podorenko, I think, is going to take another step. I think uh, he had a really good year last year. I mean, he's been almost a point a game for three years in the Big Ten, which is really hard to do, uh, especially I don't. he's not even 21 yet as a senior. I mean, he turns 21 here in a little bit. I uh, mean, maybe overshadowed a little bit by Taro last year, but he's, he's taken a, a big jump, I think, in leadership and um, his confidence and, and some of the things he does, and those will be two big guys. I think both our goalies have come back and, and look really good, and that's, out of all our positions, that's going to probably be the, the biggest key for us. And, and they have to be better, they know that, but if you look at the, the save percentage or the statistical places where the teams that get in the NCAAs, and not just the Final Four, but getting that top 16, um, they have to bump up a little bit, and I think they've done the work. Coach Exeter's done a lot of work with them, and uh, uh, they'll push each other this year just like they did last year. You mentioned that you lose a great coach in Muzzati, but you gain a great coach in Slater. So what are you looking forward to the most of having Slater come on and join the staff and the experience that he will bring? Yeah, you know, one thing that's what I like about coaching is being around other coaches. And, you know, while Jimmy hasn't coached so much, uh, he's a fairly cerebral guy. And you look at all the guys that – coaches that he's played for, whether it was in the NHL or over in Europe or World Juniors, you know, he was he was one of the captains on the Olympic team last year. He can bring a lot of 
a lot of that experience and, and a lot of that knowledge. And you know, sometimes you just look at something a little bit different and you say, hey, well, you know, maybe this will work. And though I think that's for me, practice is the best time of the day. The second best part is our meetings from nine to ten when we go over stuff and decide what we're going to do and, and where all those things. It's just it's like a hot stove every day. And, uh, um, Jimmy brings a lot of that to the table, and uh, it's been interesting to hear his ideas on, on some things. And I'm looking forward to him again, just you know, hey, working with the centers on faceoffs and the guys with that one kill. And, um, it's always, like I said, we're real excited for Jason, and uh, at the same time, excited to have Jimmy come in, the guy with that much experience uh, coming to help us.